yeah uh, very good uh, uh, greetings everyone so uh, i welcome all of you on behalf of team own your growth this is azuma and i have with me today reham al mishlawi who is a lebanese dietitian with a professional master's degree in nutrition and dietetics formulation and innovation of nutritional products clinical and public health nutrition human nutrition from the faculty of public health from the lebanese university she is an online dietitian currently living in ghana uh, the most interesting thing that i see about her profile is she has done uh, she has worked more than a year at danish refugee council which i'd love to hear more about and she is given a lot of awareness sessions about nutrition to kids and adolescents and uh, she has done a lot of um, attended a lot of online courses so uh, i'm sure this session is going to be very insightful and today she'll be talking to us on diet beyond counting calories over to you ma'am thank you thank you so much for your kind introduction and i'm really very glad to be with you today so let's begin with our topic so it's diet beyond counting calories the fact is whenever we see that someone is really following a certain diet we see that we see we see, we see that a lot of people just focus on the eating habits and also on the physical activity but uh, many studies show that if, uh, just focusing on these factors are not really enough to maintain a certain uh, weight uh, or even to uh, to live a healthy way so they focus also that we need to take in consideration also two other factors which are the stress and also sleep so today i'm going to talk about all these factors and we will see how each one can affect our health so let's begin with a diet plan so in the last years many uh, in the last years uh, many diets start to be more popular and yes many people lost weight by following them but the red question that i need to ask you today is do you really these diets can be followed till the, till the last of the life unfortunately not many studies show that these diets uh, cannot be followed for the rest of the life and many people uh, don't stick on them and go back to their back to their bad eating habits so whenever someone ask me uh, which diet should i follow or what is the best way to lose weight i would say that as michael pollan said eat food not too much and mostly plant based so what does that mean first eat food as to eat more real food eat more whole food so eat more fruits and vegetables eat more whole grain and legumes eat more nuts and seeds and finally go for choosing more the healthy fats like peanut butter or even avocado second also when we say eat food so we should limit as much as we can the processed food because all these one contain a very high uh, calorie a calorie amount even they they contain a high amount of sugar of bad fat and also of salts the second part is not too much so even if i'm eating something healthy i should take in consideration its quantity so moderation is the key for the third part it's mostly plant based because in fact many studies show that a diet that is really uh, that is really high uh, or rich in animal based food is more related to an increase of risk of cancer or even of chronic diseases but remember food is meant to be enjoyed and not fed so following a healthy diet uh doesn't mean that you should totally avoid your favorite ice cream or your favorite chips no you can eat whatever you really like but the key again again and again is moderation now let's move to the second factor with, which is the physical activity so let's see together now the benefit of the physical activity so it will help in improving the memory uh, and the brain function it help in the weight management also to lower the blood pressure and also to improve the heart health to improve the quality of sleep to reduce the feelings of anxiety and depression to combat the cancer related fatigue to improve the joints and also to maintain the muscle strength balance and finally to increase the lifespan so whenever someone wanted to make a certain exercise he should take in consideration these three factors which are the type 
the frequency and the duration of the exercise. So according to the WHO, it recommends that any, anyone should make at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity. And also in combination with at least two times per week of muscle strengthening activity. And here we have some examples. So we have swimming, cycling, brisk walking. All of these are some examples of moderate intensity aerobic activities. And we have also the push-ups, the weightlifting, and also the squats. They, these are some examples of the muscle strengthening activities. Now let's move to the third part, which is stress. In fact, many studies show that the stress is more related to weight gain, inflammation, chronic diseases, depression, and even cancer. But how? Whenever we are stressed, we go for eating more junk food because these food will, will really induce a certain uh, release of dopamine after eating them. So that's why we call them the comfort food. Biscuits, chocolate, so all these foods really give us a certain pleasure after eating them. But the fact is this pleasure will just last for a few, for few minutes because after that, we will notice that we were just were eating something very high in calorie, very high in sugar and fat and even in salt. So this will may lead to weight gain with time, of course. The second explanation, is, and it's a more physiological one, when we are under a chronic or under a very prolonged, prolonged stress, our body will release, we know that the hormone of stress is cortisol. This one, and in combination with the other hormone, will lead to a certain redistribution of the fat of our body in a way to be more accumulated in our abdominal part. So we will get a certain visceral fat in a high amount. And as we know that the visceral fat is a certain organ that, that will release some hormone and some chemicals that increase the inflammation and also the insulin resistance. And as we know that inflammation is the start point of any chronic disease. So now let's see together some tips to manage stress. So first we have to identify the sources of stress in our life. So it gets moving as to make always at a certain level of physical activity to make time for fun and relaxation, maintain a balance with a healthy lifestyle, practice the four A's of stress management, which are to avoid a, uh, the, the stressor situation if, if we have, so first to try to avoid it. If not, so try to alter the situation. If not, so also we can start to adapt the, to the stressor and to accept finally this, the things that we cannot really change. Try also to connect to others manage your time better, and finally, learn to re relieve stress in the moment. So let's move to the last part, which is uh, sleep. So we know that a normal adult should sleep between th seven, seven to eight hours per day. But studies show that more than 40% of our population sleep less than six hours per day. So whenever I need to assess my sleeping, I shouldn't just focus only on the quality, on the quantity of my sleep or the duration, but also on the, its quality. Now, let's see how sleep deprivation can affect our body health. So sleep deprivation, uh, it's, uh, it's a an, it's an, uh, condition when we sleep less than six hours per day. So how it, had, how it, could, be, how it could really affect our body. First, we have a certain increase in the obesity in adults and children. We have an increase in the risk of diabetes and impaired glucose to tolerance. We have an increase in the anxiety symptoms, an increase in the depressed moods and the alcohol use. And finally, an increase in the cardiovascular disease and hypertension. So now let's see how sleep deprivation can affect our body weight. So whenever we sleep less than six hours, a certain hormonal disturbance will appear. So we have a certain increase in the hunger hormone, which is ghrelin by 25%. We have an increase in the cortisol level. We have an increase in the insulin level. And finally, we have a decrease in the hormone and the uh, appetite hormone. So we can, see, we can say that in a, in a case of sleep deprivation, we really feel hungrier. So we go for eating more junk food, so we accumulate more fat. So here are some tips to manage our sleep or try to sleep better. First, to avoid the large meals and the beverage uh, before sleeping, to exercise 
but not too late uh, before sleeping. To stick to a sleep schedule, to don't lie in the bed awake, don't take naps after 3 p.m., have a good sleeping environment, avoid the alcoholic drinks before bed, and avoid also uh, caffeine and nicotine. And finally, relax before bed and take a hot bath before bed. So in the end, uh, the concept of, uh, of really counting the calories and just focus uh, in a way to be just focusing on the calorie and should be less than the calorie out is not really uh, the good way or it's not really enough to, uh, to live healthy or even to maintain a, a certain healthy weight. We should also take in consideration three other factors, which are exercise, stress, and sleep. And thank you. Thank you, uh, Ilham. That was a, a very brief but wonderful insight. I'm sure uh, um, this shows how effective you were uh, while giving awareness sessions. Would you like to share a little about your experience? My my experience? Yeah. Yeah. For me, when I when I start uh, when I start uh, working with the DRC Danish Refugee Council. Uh, it was the first. Uh, it was my first. Uh, my first. My first uh, work experience. Mm -hmm. I loved working with kids and really to make some uh, uh, funny activities and uh, uh, some powerpoints, but in, in a very funny way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to make them. Uh, and even we start to make to prepare some uh, healthy cookies or healthy recipes together. So it was very a very um, interesting experience, uh, really. Uh, I loved also uh, when uh, I make a lot of uh, not uh, the, my 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 internship in the hospital. I made the two uh, dietetic internship in hospitals in Lebanon. It was also uh, very interesting because there we you really contact with more patients. And I took and I was the responsible on uh, on a certain cancer case. Uh, she was uh, yeah, a, a girl with uh, leukemia, and she was she was uh, only 18 years old. Uh, and uh, yes, I, I think that this experience really um, uh, left a certain very uh, special Absolutely. things as uh, not not only on the on the um, like um, professional work, not only uh, also in the personal uh, level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very personal. Yeah, because we cry together. We I go to the to the chemotherapy with her. Yeah, it was the more uh, uh, social. I, I, I yeah, it was more. Yeah, it touched me. <laughs> really lovely. Uh, uh -huh. Now, uh, now, and just now, okay, because I have a certain Insta page. Uh, it's called Happy Health Freeham. Yeah, this uh, and this on my page, I just uh, download a lot of videos. You know, awareness aware about nutrition. Because even in our society, we have a lot of uh, lack in knowledge, uh, and also I'm trying to make uh, a lot of uh, health uh, recipes, traditional one, more healthier. You know and try to make some other new recipes yeah i'm very glad very very glad to be with you because i love india and everything about india really we love um, i you hope that you. i can visit it one day sure we'd love to have you <laughs> thank Just you put us in touch when you come here with you <laughs> um okay and i would also like to ask about uh, yeah. how is the health uh, eating habits because you told that you're currently in ghana yeah. Uh, so how is the eating habits, lifestyle practices of people of Ghana? Oh. Uh, uh, unfortunately, in Ghana, they use too much the palm oil, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, which is a saturated one, and uh, it's not really healthy at all. And also because the majority of the people are really poor, so they go more to the fried, uh, the fried items. So in street, they, most of the, of the things that they really sell, it's uh, fried. Mm -hmm. They use, uh, but they have but the, the things that it's really, um, I love it in Ghana, it's uh, the tropical fruits that it's very cheap here. Mm -hmm. And they, there is a variety of uh, tropical fruits from ananas, the mango, the, you know, and um, uh, because people are poor, so the, there is no uh, uh, lot of, you know, um, transport, so they go by walking. So you think, uh, I see that the physical activity here is really, uh, it's not low. Mm -hmm. There's uh, many people that really make a physical activity just by working, you know? Mm -hmm. 
it's not just by going to the gym because they are really poor but uh, yes they have they have a certain physical activity level but um, the majority of their eating habits are not really very uh, very healthy and they have a really a, a big lack in the knowledge of many diseases. Uh, I think that the diabetes till now is not really um, known in Ghana, you know. Uh, all these chronic diseases, are there is no um, enough awareness about them. I think that this will be maybe uh, better in the, in, the later, in, the, in the later years, you know, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, what difficult di difficulties do you face while uh, consulting people who are uh, not so well off, but at the same time you want to change their eating habits? Yeah, for, uh, for me, if someone here, uh, for me, I don't really uh, ask people to avoid something at all or to, to stop eating something that they really love. You, know, uh, you shouldn't eat it at all. You can eat, I still allow them to eat it, but you know, um, uh, for example, two times for, for uh, in a month, for example. Yeah, because I think that if, uh, asking people to avoid something that they really like and uh, totally, they won't, they won't really stick to this diet. So I need to help them, and I always, I always insist that we can't really lose weight, but in a gradually, in a gradually way. So we, really, we shouldn't really lose weight in 10 kilo in a one month. No, we can do it gradually, you know. And this is, the, I think that this is a very successful way to really help your patient to stick to the diet even when you really stop following him. Yeah. And uh, how is health education given for? Uh, school children is it a part of your uh, school curriculum what i, I uh, sorry i didn't hear uh is the the education about health good eating habits a part of children's uh, school curriculum uh, uh, or no uh, no in our school no we, we didn't no we we don't we don't talk like we don't we didn't take this as a no but uh, just in uh, uh, my university, yeah, of course, we, 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 we took a certain uh, subject about how we can really um, affect the, uh, the, the children's diets and also how to really uh, enhance your, your kids uh, uh, to really uh, go for a healthy, healthy choices. But in schools, no, and for, unfortunately, no, it's not really educated. Also in Ghana, is this the case? Uh, uh, um, in fact, I, I, I don't know really in Ghana how it works here. You know? okay. mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, while coming to, uh, because you've been trained in a country and now you're working in this uh, yes. Ghana, uh, what challenges do you face as a dietitian? And also now that you've been doing consultations online, yes. What challenges do you face when uh, people uh, while making people follow the routine that is? Yeah. Uh, first, the first challenge was that their culture is different totally than our culture. You know, the cooking, the recipes, everything is really different than than our culture. So first, I had a big challenge to uh, make my own research on all these all their recipes and. Uh, the main or the, the biggest challenge is to just convince them so to please stop using the palm oil because <laughs> um, mm -hmm. they use it in, so it's uh, maybe it's the only it's the only oil that they really, that they really use the palm oil and everything mm -hmm. so that was a big challenge so yeah you can make just an awareness uh, uh, awareness uh, you know uh, hours how uh, palm oil can really affect our uh, our health to make and it's really a main reason or a main cause to make the chronic diseases so uh, this was a big challenge and also the big challenge was that people think the good a good dietitian or a good diet makes them to lost weight uh, uh, um, for example a very big uh, uh, for example seven kilos in one in one month they, they think that mm -hmm. this loss of weight is related to a very good dietitian and it's not and it's uh, really uh, you know false because um, I was trying to, to tell them because that this is more related to to loss of water and it's not a loss of fat you know trying to convince them and gradually yeah they start to really be convinced mm -hmm. yeah 
So it's this notion about uh, uh, health and weight with uh, common people that losing kilos or weight yeah. in grams is uh, is an indication of uh, moving towards good health, yeah. which is yeah. usually not the case. Yeah, yeah, they really want to lose weight, a very high number of kilos, and a very short duration. And that's totally mm. false. Yeah, it's not related. It's not. It's not a sign that you really lost the fat yeah okay uh, and uh what do you think is a good thing that uh about working with people in ghana uh they are uh they are lovable people they are not really uh, they are lovable kind uh i think they are uh, in a certain way they they um they uh, they they work with you in a certain professional way because uh, and i think that um uh, they really appreciate what you do uh, uh, mm -hmm. So you, you think that, that there's no difference between a Ghanaian or even if you are a foreign one, you know? So uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, just, the, just one thing that was um, that makes a living here is, much, is a little bit the difficult is that as a, a woman or because, you know, I'm a girl, so I, I cannot really go to, to the street or, you know, to, to walk alone, you know? It's not very secure here, but uh, um, when you work in a company or with uh, with you know with professional one, you uh, it's very it's, uh, you, you you can really find yourself there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that was a great uh, discussion with you. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, Rahul. Really to be with you. Uh, wishing you all the best in Thank the you. coming days. Thank you so much. So yeah. Uh, or uh, do you want to give us some parting comments? Comments. Uh, first, uh, I um, I'm very, uh, I'm, I didn't expect that um, uh, that one day I, I could really um, talk with you know to communicate with with Indian you know it's I'm I'm really glad to be one uh, one of of the one that I gave an awareness session on your platform uh, and I hope uh, also for you all the success. Uh, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe if I visited India uh, I would message you or even I will Lovely. be in contact with you he always is all here to welcome you thank you <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much for having uh, you know giving us uh, an insight of how easily we can uh, give this nutritional awareness to people yeah because we yeah, thank uh, as we study we have this uh, big big lectures to yeah, you know, yeah we don't know how to zero it down for uh, making common man understand it so your Thank session you. was such that it uh, it it, it uh, serves as a guide for us to help us in our career too thank you so much thank you thank you so much for you too